Niue's Public Health Division continues to caution members of the public that dengue fever is still on the island. Health officials says the dengue fever appears to be gradually easing with two new cases last week. That brings the dengue figures of positive cases to date to 51. Acting Director of Health Manila Nosa says the health department continues to advise members of the public to clean up around their homes to destroy mosquito breeding areas. Those presenting with dengue symptoms are reminded to seek medical attention and assessments by doctors will determine whether people are hospitalized or quarantined to the confinement of their own homes. The recent low court injunction case between landowners filed for and the Crown will bear much weight on some of the decisions depending on any other lands given to Crown for usage in the past years. Recently, New York government proposed a commercial development in the area and has now been challenged by the landowners. Because of the specifications, land was given by their ancestors to the Crown. Liolo School area was negotiated in the 1960s with the intention of gifting the land to the Crown for the purpose of establishing a school in Abasele village. The negotiations took nine years in which Crown took the land by warrant and arranged compensation for the owners. Years later, the outer villages discontinued their schools and the main schools established in Alofi. As with all submissions into, into the court hearing, a decision has been reached by the new high courts that the purpose in which the lands was given to the Crown is for community development and the intentions of any development should benefit the community. We'll bring you more on this story in our future news bulletin and government's reaction to the latest decision by the courts. Matawai Resort is now expanding to include motel units as part of ongoing developments to boost tourist numbers to the island. According to Matawai board member his Excellency Mark Blumsky, agreements have been signed for a section of land in Tamakotonga. Motel unit designs have been approved and land has been cleared for the project to go ahead. These are all part of Matawai expansion plans with 24 pre-existing rooms, all nearly refurbished, 20 new forest garden sea view rooms near completion to be completed in July and an additional development of 10 motel units is underway. We've just signed a contract uh, to uh, build Matavai motels, about another sort of uh, probably um, 500 metres round through Tamakotonga. Um, we've taken a lease on a lovely bit of land, seaside, and we're building right now um, 10 motel units. And these, um, just if you like, are a further extension of the accommodation build for the island. For the lease at Tamakatonga, we have a 60-year lease, and, uh, and that lease and the operation are very tied to the Matavai Resort. So that when people go online, they'll go online, they'll look at the Matavai Resort, and they'll have three options. They'll have the, the existing block, the brand new units, or the motel option. Because there are people that don't want to stay in a hotel resort. They want their cooking facilities. They want to stay with kids, and these have interjoining rooms. The rooms, uh, the units interjoin, so you can have big families there. There's the pool there, but they can cook there as well. And for people that have small kids, that's actually an option they quite like. And then there's a lot of the, the, the divers and the fishermen that actually like the idea of a motel and they can just uh, relax and do their own thing. So, um, so the motels, um, they'll be very, very popular. We're very excited about the Matavai Motels. It's part of the Premier's and the, my Minister's vision of building accommodation so a second flight can, can come. We would have liked to have had this open in uh, July, but it's just taken us a fraction longer to organise uh, the land and the buildings. We don't open this till the 1st of September. That's part of the reason why the Premier's had to delay the second flight from this year to next year. Because at the end of the day, it's all right having people on the plane, but they've got to have somewhere to sleep. And this has been our challenge, and we're working hard on making sure that when the second flight comes, there are enough beds for people to sleep. His Excellency says this has been a year-long process to get to this stage, but Matawai Niue Limited 
have big plans for the four star resort but hope that within the next five to ten years the whole operation will be returned to the newer people with the expansions and developments it will mean they'll need more labor to maintain standards there will be a challenge but it will also open up employment opportunities and that's a challenge because Matavai Resort is a four-star resort, so there has to be the service. You have to have the service in the hotels. You have to have the service in the rooms, the cleaning, and and have the change of um, linen, etc., daily. And that's the challenge for um, the manager there, Adrian, and his team to to build a team of people. Um, and he's looking for people. He has to build a bigger team. He'll be responsible for looking after the motel units as well. So he'll need another team of people. So it's great employment opportunities for locals. And if the locals, um, if we, we struggle to get the locals involved, we're going to have to look further afield and, and get a bit smarter about how we find um, employment. Uh, the Matavai Nui Limited Board, um, who, who are doing the operation, um, are now look at looking for the next, for want of a better piece of land, that we can do another Tamaka Tonga type of operation as well. The market we hear from all the agents is desperate for motel type of units, those where people can cook and have the um, free and easy access. That's what the market is now looking for. The matter of, I think, with the 44 rooms is, is ideally positioned, but now those people want those sort of family-type cook-and-clean uh, operations where they have a bit more freedom. The motor units are a $1.2 million investment, and Matawai Motels will be open on the 1st of September, but are already taking in bookings. New Year Touch rugby trials have begun with an expectation that half or more of the New Year representative side will be selected from outside of New Year. New Year Touch President Stan Colony said training has already started for the selected players who the association needed to review based on also on the performances from previous tournaments held on the island. However, the final selection is yet to confirm as the association tried to identify the best players on the island to represent Niue at the spin tournament scheduled to take place on Niue in October. Mr Kalawini said players on the island need to raise their standard of play and make sure fitness level reach 13 and continue. Three different categories of games will be held on the island with the open men, open women and the over 35-year-old men. Five countries have made confirmation, Samoa, Fiji, Tuvalu, PNG and Niue. But the association said they yet to receive notice from the Cook Islands and there are possibilities of teams from Tahiti and Tokelau. An invitation was also sent to Touch New Zealand and the Māori New Zealand team. Mr Colony said the two teams from New Zealand, if they wish to accept, will only participate to encourage levels of play for the Pacific Islanders, but they will not continue to the semi-finals or finals. However, the difficult part now, says the President, is the logistics, such as the villagers who have volunteered and identified to host the teams. The New Touch Associations are asking the public for volunteers during the two-week event. And to end our news bulletin, a New Year resident that was murdered in Rotorua at the beginning of this year has be finally been laid to rest yesterday. The ashes of Roman Henry Skorek arrived in New Year a few weeks ago and yesterday family and friends farewelled him at his home in Huihui Hui where his ashes were buried. A 21-year-old male admitted to Mr Skorek's murder and was due in court for sentencing this week. A 21- or 20-year-old and two teenagers have also been charged with the murder. They have not yet pleaded to the charges. That's our news bulletin for tonight. Good evening.